How are you? Ooh, sounded a little weird. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? How is it going? You guys, it's Friday. So excited. It is Feel Good Friday. That is always a fun day. Always a fun day, right? Friday is good for so many reasons. And uh, Feel Good Friday, just that's just like the icing on the cake. <laughs> So how is everybody? I'm going to give everybody a minute to come on in before we get down to business. I hope everybody is staying warm and dry. It is very rainy here and I have looked at the extended forecast. It looks like it's going to be raining for the next few days and I have like this major like sinus migraine issue like right in here. It just feels like my head is in a vice. I know it's the weather. Just ugh, gross. Hopefully by tomorrow. My head, my sinuses will have adjusted to this nasty, nasty weather. You couldn't find me. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> it's in the 80s, Suzanne? Whoa. Where are you, Suzanne? I always forget. Hi, Joan. Hi, Anita. So good to see you guys. Hey, Rosanna. My friend, Jamie. Jamie, I feel like it's been a minute since I've seen you. Are you okay, my friend? Hi, Wendy. Yes, always good with Feel Good Friday, says Claire. Hi, Janice. Hi, Patty. <laughs> Notice the octave change. I don't know. I'm just kind of <laughs> happy Friday indeed. So it is Feel Good Friday. There's Miss Colleen. And... In New Orleans, it's in the 80s. Wow. Wow. It's going to be in the 80s here before you know it. Like, we always kind of just skip spring. Like, it'll be cold, and then you'll wake up one day, and it's hot. And that's just it. That's it for the next six months. <laughs> that's just the way it goes, right? We don't get much spring here. And I'm sure it's very similar to New Orleans, where there's a lot of humidity. Like, the humidity comes on strong and just does not let up until September. Yeah, it is. Lucy says it's a dreary, cold, wet weather day. It is here too, um, and definitely a good day for making jewelry. So hopefully, you guys, today's project will inspire you. And if it doesn't inspire you and you want me to do the thinking for you, I have kits in the shop. They actually just uploaded. That's why I'm a little late. I'm running behind in so many areas, but um, that I needed to be, I needed to be, <laughs> Sure to get those kits on the Etsy shop. So that's what we're doing today. It's Feel Good Friday, which means we're going to do something easy and fun. And you can either grab the kits over in the Etsy shop or you can take the inspiration that I give you for today's project and use things from your own stash to recreate the projects. The projects are always fairly simple and um, are just kind of fun, right? Just some easy brain candy to take you through the weekend. So what do we have going on today? Well, today we're doing necklaces and I actually have three different ones to show you. And there are, I'm only going to make one of them because they're all three made exactly the same way. Um, but it just kind of just goes to show the versatility of just taking one design and changing up the, the, um, the beads, right? And changing up the metals to get completely different results. And what I wanted to kind of focus on today is connectors because I know you've got connectors in your stash and I'm talking about earring drops where it's maybe it's got a loop at the top and then maybe three like a chandelier connector or maybe it's just a connector where there's a loop on either side. Let me show you. Um, so like this guy, it's a ring in the center, which is very decorative, but then there's a loop at the top and a loop at the bottom. And a lot of times these get used for things like earrings, right? You do your earring hook and then dangle a bead from it, or you use it as a connector in a bracelet and put beads on either sides. Well, I thought it would be really fun to take our connectors and maybe our chandelier earring drops and put them as the focal point of a necklace, because I feel like maybe... Um, maybe you don't think to do that, right? Or maybe you do and I'm, you know, maybe I'm just reminding you of something that you've got in your stash that you can use. And I think that's fun because sometimes like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when you buy things and it makes me think of, of like, like 
socks, right? When you go to buy socks, you'll get like six packs or you'll get six pairs in a pack, but it's never seven. So you don't get enough for like the whole week, right? I want to buy my socks in a pack of seven. Sometimes when it comes to jewelry findings, it's the same way. So something that is meant to be like a pair, like your earring drops, sometimes they'll sell in like a set of, or you know, like a set of three or five. So you always have like this one left over and you don't have a mate for it unless you buy another pack of them. Well, using them in an, in a in a necklace scenario is going to give you a way to use up that one leftover that you've got, right? So kind of fun, kind of different. Um, just thinking outside the box with some of the things that you've already got. And again, like I said, if you don't and you don't want to do any of the thinking, the kits are over in the shop. Let me just give you guys a quick little update on the shop. So in the shop right now are the three kits for the three different styles of necklaces. We're only going to put together one, but I'll show you all three. Um, also, there are odds and ends that I've been kind of uploading all week. Tonight, hopefully tonight, if it's not tonight, it'll be tomorrow. I have a whole bucket, a whole nother tote full of things going in the Etsy shop that I still need to photograph and list. So there will be more jewelry making supplies in the shop. Also, if you guys remember the sodalite necklaces that we made that sold out immediately, everybody loved those. I have enough beads to recreate those necklaces with amethyst. So if you're interested in that exact same design, but you want it in purple, I've got some amethyst beads. I'm going to put that together and I'm going to put that in the shop as well. Um, so just, just be aware that if you really liked that necklace, but blue's not really your color, purple's going in as soon as I can get it. So keep an eye on the Etsy shop all weekend because there will be things being uploaded um, starting today through the rest of the weekend. All right, so let me show you the three necklace styles and then we're gonna put one of them together. Now keep in mind, these are all created exactly the same way. Okay, it's the exact same technique, which is just a little bit of wire wrapping. There's nothing hard here. Um, and it's the same style, but the difference is in the metals and in the bead choices, okay? So this is the fanciest one. I'm gonna show this one to you first, okay? So this one, and again, it's over in the shop. So this one is probably the sparkliest of all of them and probably the most dressy. We've got a mixture of the metallic kind of bronze gold and that kind of smoky silver metallic look. And I used a chandelier earring drop as the focal for this, right? And it made the coolest little center component. It had three little drops here. If you've got these in your stash, use them as your necklace components. Super, super cool and super super duper fancy <laughs> i got some of these over in the shop the only thing about the necklaces is that i didn't have enough chain so you'll get everything to make this portion but you're going to need your own chain so you can kind of decide on your on your chain part is this a kit yes ma'am it is over in the shop right now <laughs> all three of these are in um are going to be over in the shop i already listed them so they're ready to go but all three Again, made exactly the same way. Just going to kind of show you the differences. So the next one is very much March and St. Patrick's Day inspired. Same necklace. Let me shorten up the chain a little bit. Same, same style, right? Exact same setup, but different beads and different metal. And that's going to give you, whoa, I'm in trouble here. It's going to give you a completely different look. So this one is more like springtime and, you know, very much St. Patrick's Day inspired. There are some check glass beads, some pearls. There are some little Swarovski crystals throughout this guy. Same necklace, but completely different results, right? Totally different. Antique brass instead of the gold. Gives it a totally different look. Totally the same thing, right? I used a little connector here that normally I would just use as some sort of drop, but that's my focal, right? If you guys are interested in the focals, I've got a whole bag of these. Maybe I'll put some of just the focals in the shop and you can like play around with them yourself if you want to, but this kit's also over there, okay? And then last but not least is the one we're gonna put together. And this one is, again, exact same thing, but in a totally different colorway, but exactly the same concept, okay? So same thing, but this one's in coppers and reds. There are some Picasso Jasper beads that are running through this one. So in your kit, you'll get, you know, your little Picasso Jasper, you've got your check glass beads, but that combination of the copper and red gives this a completely different look, right? 
all three necklaces exactly the same, exactly the same. But it's, you know, it just goes to show like what you've got in your stash, find a design that you really, really like, and then you can change it up, right? You can change it up, get a completely different look, same thing, just totally different beads. So we're going to put this one together today, super easy peasy, but if you want the PC parts, they're all in the shop, my friends. All right, so without further ado, let's get down to business, shall we? <laughs> Kathy says, love the reds. I do too. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Of course, you guys know I love red, but I love copper too. And to put the copper with the red is so unexpected and different. I really, really like that combination. Okay, so just to kind of show you what to expect in your little kit or what you're going to need if you're going to use your own supplies, okay? So we're using a little connector here, this little copper guy. He's got a loop on the top, a loop on the bottom. Okay, I've got some twisted jump rings just because I like the added little bit of texture. And then I've got some other just copper jump rings. And this is a mixed metal piece. I don't know if you noticed or not, but there is silver in this as well. So there's some silver jump rings and some little daisy spacers. And then these tiny little baby drops that are just super, super cute. Okay, and as far as the beads are concerned, let me dump these out for you so you can see. So the beads are a mix match, if you will. So you've got some of these really cool kind of coppery peach check glass. You've got some round, some, I'm sorry, faceted rondelles in that bright, bright red. There's four of the little baby ones, because I love that size. There are five Picasso Jasper beads, just because I felt like it really needed like some little, it needed something I don't know. It just needed something kind of earthy to kind of bring it down a little bit. Some little crystals. Those are not Swarovski. They're just little glass crystals. And then some extra little copper beads. So this is this is what it's going to take to put together the necklace, which is not a lot. But then you got to add in things like your findings and stuff as well. Um, but the results are so pretty, right? If you grab the kit, just remember with all three of the necklace kits, you got to have your own chain. I just didn't have enough chain um, to go around. I wished that I had, but it just didn't work out that way. All right, so let's put this necklace together. The only things that we're going to do technique wise for this because that's the way feel good Fridays are is just some wire wrapped loops right we're not doing anything major crazy or hard we're just going to do some simple simple wrapped loops and if you don't want to do wrapped loops you don't have to you can do just regular simple loops if you want all right so let me grab my head pins here and then we've got a pile of eye pins as well. Okay, so we're gonna start, we're gonna start in the middle. We're gonna build our center section that's gonna hang from our copper um, focal here, okay? So we're gonna start with the three little drops. I'm just gonna thread on a one of these checked, checked glass beads. Actually, let's go ahead and like, We'll do them all three at once. That might save us a little bit of time too because I don't want to keep you guys here forever. That's what Feel Good Fridays are about, right? We do quick and simple and then kind of move on for the day. All right, so we've got our three check glass beads here and we're going to do just some wrapped loops on the top of these guys. So you're going to get lots of practice doing your wrapped loops, okay? So I'm grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the bead and I'm using my chain nose pliers for that. And I'm going to bend the wire 90 degrees. And notice I'm bending over the top of the barrel of the pliers. That's what's going to give you that space that's in between there for your wire wrap. So you don't have to do any of the extra measuring. You don't have to like eyeball it and, and guess. Let the pliers do the measuring for you. Then you're going to come in with your round nose pliers. And we're going to grab the wire. And we're holding it so that our pliers are up and down. Okay. We've got a top barrel and a bottom barrel. We're gonna take our wire and we're gonna go up and over that top barrel, just like that, okay? We make that funny little question mark. And now we need to take the wire all the way around to complete this loop. However, our pliers, the bottom barrel of the pliers is in the way. So what we need to do is we need to just roll the pliers like this and switch them so that now the bottom barrel is now the top barrel. And that gives us enough room to guide that wire over to close up that loop, right? 
So now we're gonna switch hands and I am going to use another pair of pliers to grab my wire and I'm gonna wire wrap in that space between the loop and the top of the bead. I've got enough room to do about three wire wraps. Okay, so there's that. And then we're gonna come in with our cutter tool and we're gonna trim that off. Now I walked through that pretty slow, but I'm gonna speed up because we've got a lot of these wire wrapped loops to make. So if you need to see that again, you definitely can watch this on um, replay over on YouTube and you can see it over and over again, which is really handy if you ask me. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other two, okay? So we're just going to bend. We're gonna come in with our round nose pliers. Oh, I'm so glad, and you're welcome for me being me. I don't know how to be anybody else, so you're in luck, you're in luck. <laughs> Everybody else was already taken, so. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna wire wrap, and it actually looks like I have enough room to do four wraps, so I'm, sometimes you get lucky, right? It's lucky to me because I like to do the wrapping part. So I get excited if there's room for four wraps. This, you know, makes things more fun. <laughs> All right, one more. So these will be the bottom little beads. And essentially what we're making is kind of like a little bit, it's very, very similar to a tassel made out of beads. It's not a tassel, but it still has that kind of movement and swing to it because we've got three kind of beaded sections that are hanging next to each other very closely. So it really does kind of give the, um, the appearance of like having a beaded tassel. So if you're kind of feeling that, but maybe you're not quite ready to commit full on to a tassel, <laughs> And then this is definitely a look that, that you can like, you can kind of try out the tassel feel and see how it works for you. Okay, so these guys are ready to go. We just need to build up. So let me lay out the beads so I can kind of show you where we're going with this. So our next little beaded section is gonna have our red beads. That pop of red with the copper is so awesome. And then we're gonna stack on top of those some of these Picasso Jasper beads because who doesn't love a gemstone in the mix, okay? And then on top of those, we're gonna stack, I am missing a bead here, hold on. Nobody move. <laughs> Let me grab. Somehow I ended up with one less of these little copper, actually I have more than one less of the copper beads. I have to double check all my kits here to make sure that I've got everything. Um, so, Hold on. All right, so we're gonna put these little copper, these are sparkly copper beads. They're just glass beads. They're not, you know, they're, they're not like a gemstone or anything like that. We're gonna do three of these guys, okay? And we're gonna top those off with these little crystal bicones. And we're actually gonna have an extra one in the center so that we have more of like a tiered, a tiered look. You'll see how it'll all work out. But this is where we're going. We're gonna wire wrap all of this and that will kind of build up our center section here. So we're gonna do it in groups of three. So on an eye pin, I'm gonna do a red, and then, <laughs> that that's a really good description, Joan. <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen. It's so true. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna drop those guys onto an eye pin. We're gonna do two more because they're gonna match. So we may as well, right? Just keep them keep them all going together here. Okay. So we'll go ahead with each one of these, and you know what? I want to go ahead and attach these. So. Before you thread on, just to make your life a little bit easier, you can go ahead and open up this bottom loop on your eye pins. Now you wanna treat your eye pin the same way you would a jump ring, right? You don't wanna pull this open because you'll never get it back into that round shape. What you wanna do is you just wanna grab to the side, right? And walk it open. That's gonna help you to keep its shape and make it much easier for you to close it back. So I'm gonna go ahead, you can see I've got it open just a little bit. I'm gonna thread on 
our bottom check glass bead and then I'm going to close it the same way just kind of closing it back with that walking motion with your pliers that definitely keeps that nice loop shape okay then go ahead and thread on your beads it just gives you a little bit more room to work with if you wait to thread your beads on all right and then we're going to do wraps loops on the top again so we're just following over the same steps bending the wire Okay, coming in with the round nose pliers. We're going up and over the top barrel, and now we need to switch the barrels, so we're just doing that, right? It's not a big movement, it's just a roll to take that wire over to the other side. And then I switch hands, and I use my dominant hand to do the wire wrapping part. If you don't, your wire wraps will be a little wonky and I feel like you'll be frustrated with them. So definitely let your dominant hand be the one to do the wire wraps for you. Otherwise, I feel like you're gonna spend a lot of time being frustrated. I've seen people do it, but. All right, trim that off. Make sure you don't have a tail sticking out. If you do, go ahead and tuck that in with your pliers, okay? So we just wanna repeat this. Doing a lot of repetition here, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Practice makes perfect. So opening up the eye pin, threading on our bead, and then just closing that back, okay? And again, thread the beads on, and we're gonna follow that again with another wraps loop. Okay, bending the wire. Um, what gauge are the head pins? So the head pins and the eye pins are, I believe these are 24 gauge. I'm fairly certain because these are the little thin ones that I love. The only problem with the thin ones is that sometimes the bead hole is too big and the beads won't stay. But I double checked with all of these. So all of the beads in your kit and the, the eye pins and the head pins that you get in your kit, it, they all fit, I promise. <laughs> but yeah, it's the 24 gauge. They're the most fun to like wind up. Okay. So trim that off, making sure there's no visible tail sticking out there. And of course, you can always run your finger over it too, just to make sure, okay? And same thing over here. So we're just using our pliers and walking that open. Don't pull it apart. I can't say that enough, okay? And then you're just gonna walk it back to closed. If you pull it open, you're just, you know, it, it really, really is hard to get that round shape back. You'll get it closed, but it's definitely gonna distort it and make it more of like an egg shape or an oval than it is a nice round loop. All right, same thing, wrapped loop. Okay, up and over, roll the pliers, taking the wire over to the other side and switching hands and doing our little wire wrap in here, okay? And then we wanna come in with our cutter and trim off, okay? All right, so there are those guys. We're just building up our little beaded sections here, okay? So now we need three more of our eye pins and we're just gonna repeat the steps. So open another one, threading on, and you know what, let's go ahead and do all three. So there's one that's ready for beads. This one will be ready for beads as well. Kind of give yourself like a little, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, the word was right on the top of my tongue. <laughs> Got a little service line going here, right? An assembly line, that's what I, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna thread on one of these. I love these beads. Look at that sparkle, they're so pretty. So we're gonna thread on one of those and then one of our little glass crystals in that kind of orangey copper color. I am loving this, col this colorway so much. I think this is probably my favorite out of the three necklaces. All right, same thing. We're just gonna follow the top of this with a wrapped loop. Okay, and switching hands. Okay, and then come in and trim off. 
This will make really pretty earrings too. So if you had like enough beads left over, you definitely could make a matching pair of earrings, particularly if you've got more of the drops, right? So if you're using stuff from your own stash, if you've got three drops, you've got a necklace and a pair of earrings to match. If you're into matchy-matchy, I know some people are not into matchy-matchy, but you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with like the colorways being the same, you know? I mean, obviously you don't want to wear like, I don't know, you can wear whatever you want to, but. <laughs> I'm not going to wear like hot pink and then, you know, on the top and then like, you know, cherry red on the bottom. I don't know. Maybe you would. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to come in and trim. Okay. And that one is ready to go. Uh-oh. That looks like a dud. Do you see? So this is really good opportunity to show you guys when you get a dud. You can see how the metal, that coating on the outside has stripped off of that. I don't like it when that happens. So I will replace it. I'm not a fan. And that happens, like it'll happen within a pack, right? Sometimes you get a couple that are just a dud and sometimes you'll never get one. Like you'll have a whole pack and they'll be great. But every once in a while I get one that's like that and it just, that outer plating just comes right off. Whenever that happens, I like to replace it with another one. I don't want to leave it because if you leave it, it's just going to flake off even more. And that's just not a good look. So, all right. I think somebody asked about my tools and Joan mentioned the, the, um, the set of pliers that I use. These are the shimmer pliers or tools from Beadalon. And they actually come, you can get the shimmer ones. The shimmer ones are the purple handle and the sparkle ones, I actually have some right here, are in the blue. So the blue sparkles too, it's just kind of harder to see on camera. They're both from Beadalon and I really, really prefer these over some of the others um, just because I have smaller hands and I feel like some of the like those ergonomical ones, those like cushiony handled tools, they're just too big for my hands. So, um, you know, I, I prefer these because they have such the such small handles to them and they last a really, really long time. So I can't recommend them enough. I feel like they're a really good set of tools and you can get um, the chain nose, the bent chain nose, the round nose, the flat nose and a little cutter tool. So they make all of the, all of the pliers, all of the basics anyway, in that, that slim handle. I really, really like them. Okay, so another wrapped loop here. Up and over, rolling the pliers, taking the wire over, and then we're going to wire wrap. And we've got more of these to wire wrap. We've got more beads to go, but we're just gonna start with our center here and then kind of work our way out, okay? All right, so now I want this center one to be a little bit longer than the rest of them. So I'm gonna add another one of these little bicones to it. And that'll make it just a little bit, a little, what am I doing? <laughs> It'll make it just a tiny bit longer. And I'm also gonna show you something else to do to these to kind of help them from being super crowded when they're hanging. So we're gonna use some jump rings to make this hang a little bit better as well. I'll show you exactly what I mean here in just a second. All right, so let's finish the wire wrap here on this guy. Oops. Okay. And we're gonna trim off our tail. Okay, all right, so now we want to attach this <coughs> to our connector here. And to do that, I'm gonna use 
a twisted copper jump ring, okay? But if I just directly attach it, it's gonna be hanging the wrong direction, right? I want it to hang nice and flat. So I'm gonna use some little four millimeter jump rings to go in between, right? There's a four millimeter jump ring is gonna be our go between. And then not only that, but if I hang all of these guys together, in fact, I'll just do it and show it to you so that you'll understand, okay? So let's open up our twisted jump ring, okay? And let's thread all of these on. And you can see, see how they kind of make more of a triangle and they don't really hang nice and flat? It's because, <coughs> excuse me, those three bicone beads at the top are really crowding each other out. They're fighting with each other for space. And I'm just not a huge, huge fan of that. So to keep that from being such an issue, I'm gonna leave the center one just like it is, okay? I just thread it directly to, <coughs> excuse me, I thread it directly to the twisted jump ring, okay? But for the other two, I'm gonna add a four millimeter jump ring to these and that is going to, free up a little bit of that space so that that top bicone is hanging next to two jump rings that are turned sideways and everything will just kind of have more of its own room. Okay, so now I will thread one of these on over here, whoops, and one on the other side. Now you'll be able to see they have a little bit more room to hang without crowding each other out. Just the addition of that extra jump ring, and it really it doesn't take away from the design, right? In fact, it helps because it's making sure that everything hangs without, you know, it just, I don't know. I like for everything to have its own place and there not to be a real struggle there. So the addition of those jump rings really is just a small adjustment, but it's gonna make a big deal in the way that um, everything hangs together. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this, okay? And then I'm gonna use my little four millimeter jump ring as my go between so that my twisted jump ring is hanging in the right direction. Whoops, hold on. <laughs> I gotta make sure that I hook it on there so that my long piece is definitely in the center. All right, I'm gonna hook that to our connector and go ahead and close that back, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing. I want another twisted jump ring up here, but because, you know, the, the connector ring and our jump ring are facing the same direction, we still need like a little go between. So I'm gonna have to grab another jump ring to grab one, because I don't have one. But we're gonna grab another four millimeter jump ring and let that be our little go between guy. He's the middleman, if you will. <laughs> and attach him and then attach to there. So this is our center section, okay? Let me lay it out flat so you can get an idea. So this is our focal for our necklace. And if you wanted to, you could really build this out. If you used a larger jump ring here, you could have even more of the dangles, right? You could have tons and tons of beaded sections that are hanging down. It could be really full. Um, and that, you know, that's gonna require a little bit more space than this little six millimeter guy is gonna give you, right? If I filled him up with some more, everything would just be too crowded. So I definitely will go with a larger jump ring if you wanted to do more of the dangles. Uh, I wanna scroll back real quick before we move on because I saw something. Hold on, let's see. Do. Beverly says, I like how you use the silver wraps and jump rings with the copper ring. I tend to want to match the metal findings but this is such a great example of how it does not have to match to look gorgeous. Yes. So I have really embraced over the past few months, I've really, really embraced the mixing of metals. And part of the reason is out of necessity because sometimes I don't always have enough copper or I don't always have enough gold to go around. And so it really was out of necessity, but from necessity, as they say, <laughs> 
um, was I really kind of fell in love with that because when I wear my jewelry, I don't stick with one metal. That used to be like a thing, right? You never wanted to mix your metals together. You always wanted, um, you know, you wanted to wear all silver or all gold. And like that's so in the past. <laughs> Fortunately for us, Everything has has kind of um, modernized in that sense, and I think I think it's no longer a faux pas, right? We can wear white after Labor Day, and we can mix our metals, and that really opens up a whole world <laughs> of jewelry design, particularly when you don't have a ton of stuff. You know, sometimes it's just like, oh, do I really need to just go buy copper headpins for this piece? I don't think so. I'll just use what I have. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to build out the length portion a little bit, okay? So we're going to, this little copper bead that's down here, we're going to bring this up into our neck, our necklace part as well. And we're going to connect everything, like I'm going to put them on eye pins, but we're going to connect them with jump rings. And from each little jump ring, I want to add dangles because you guys know I love movement and jewelry, so I have to include little extra parts that are going to hang and swing and move. So these little guys are going to hang from the jump rings, okay? And our next little section is going to be a red bead, a daisy spacer, and another one of our jasper beads. Same thing over here on the other side, a daisy spacer and a jasper bead. And then we'll do another jump ring between those another little set of the dangles because they're fun <laughs> and you can leave the dangles out you don't have to do that like not everybody is into that but I really I'm a huge huge fan and then one more copper set jump rings and our chain so that's what the the whole center of our necklace is going to look like okay and we're just going to attach all of this together with eye pins and jump rings right it's not anything super hard we're not cutting wire or any of that like we're just using our pre-made findings which makes our life a whole lot easier now for these if you don't want to do wrapped loops because this there's a simple loop on one end you can do just a simple loop I'm gonna go ahead and do wrapped loops just because I like to do wrapped loops <laughs> but you do what makes you happy with your design right so I'm gonna go ahead and wire wrap all of these while I have them laid out, and then we will assemble everything. Okay, so you're gonna get to see even more of these wrapped loops if you need, if you need to see it some more. Got plenty of opportunity here. Up and over. trim and put that one down okay our next little section will be our red I am so in love with this red and with the copper I, it just looks so good and it's such a weird combination well it might not necessarily be a weird combination but to me putting red and copper together is not something that I normally would do but for whatever reason that's what I chose and I feel like it really worked in this design I definitely will be experimenting a little bit more with red and copper together. Okay, wrapped loop on that. Yeah, I would definitely consider this like boho chic for sure. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really not huge on like labeling um, things because it's really kind of hard to like you know, decide exactly where your jewelry fits in. <laughs> and I don't like to struggle with that. You guys know I'm not one for fitting in anywhere. So, <laughs> but yeah, it definitely, because of kind of the movement and all of the swinging elements that are here, it definitely has that kind of boho feel to it. But because of the sparkle and the facets in the beads, it, it definitely has the chic element to it. So I, I would go with that. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good way to describe it for sure. All right. 
right, so just moving on over here to the other side and we're gonna build out and then we'll do these little guys. I save these little guys for last. I love the tiny beads and <laughs> wire wrapping on them. Um, it just gives me this ridiculous amount of joy when making jewelry, so I'm saving the best for last. <laughs> which I know is silly to some people, but then other people totally get it. They're like, yes, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's funny. Everybody has like a little something in jewelry making that they just love to do. And me doing a wrapped loop with a really thin head pin or eye pin and a little tiny bead, like it just gives me such gratification. I, it's, it's so weird, but so good. <laughs> All right, this is our last bead on the opposite side here. So we're pretty close to being done. We've just got four little beads to wire wrap and then we're just gonna assemble everything. So really the only main technique that there was to this is just the wrapped loops. And anywhere there is a wrapped loop, if you are uncomfortable with the wrapped loop, you can certainly get away with doing just a simple loop and you are going to get um, the same results, right? You're gonna still get a beautiful design. It's all gonna be looking the same. Nobody's gonna notice whether or not you did wrapped loops or simple loops. And if anybody is that close, I, you know, I hope you're doing something more entertaining than talking about the wrapped parts of your jewelry. Not being vulgar, just saying. Somebody could be giving you a smooch, you know? <laughs> you never know. If they're that close, I hope they're giving you a smooch <laughs> and not like sniffing you and like, ew. <laughs> okay, I just went to a really weird place there. All right, <laughs> now for the fun part, I'm going to do the <laughs> I love that you guys put up with me. <laughs> I'm going to do the wrapped loops on these little guys. Oh, goodness. It's just like I said yesterday. You'd be the juiciest peach on the tree and not everybody likes peaches, right? That's okay. Some people just do not, do not find me funny at all. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Beverly, I'm glad I'm making you laugh. That's, you know, that's, that's my job. <laughs> to educate you about jewelry and to brighten your day just a little bit if I can, right? We don't have to take ourselves so seriously. And I think that people really get stuck on that because you can still have a sense of humor and not take yourself so seriously and be a professional, right? And I will, I will fight you <laughs> over whether I'm a professional or not. I guarantee you 110% I am a professional, but that doesn't mean that I have to be a, a stiff shirt, right? <laughs> I love that. Hold on. I got to roll back. Somebody said, hold on, hold on. There are a couple of things. Um, if they're that close, they better be buying me jewelry. I feel that in my soul, Sylvia. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fern says, I like peaches, but I peel off the fuzz. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, you guys crack me up. That's why we make such a good little family here. <laughs> better be buying me. They better be buying me jewelry. At least be buying me dinner, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. Feel good Friday, my friends. Things tend to get a little silly around here. All right, so we're right here at the end and now we're just going to assemble. I've got one more of these to go and we'll put all of this together. And just know that if you do go over to the shop and you buy the kits that are in the shop, even if you buy the green necklace or you buy the gold sparkly necklace, the assembly is exactly the same. Okay, so you're going to be able to, um, yeah, I'll show the, the other ones at the end. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, 
you'll be able to follow these exact same steps, right? For the assembly of the, um, the necklace. It's just, you're just gonna get a different result as far as the look is concerned, but all of the steps are gonna be the same. The only difference is that the gold necklace has, instead of just a single loop here at the bottom, it has three loops. Um, but I mean, I feel like that's kind of self-explanatory. But of course, if you ever have questions and you know, you're know you stumped with something, sometimes over in the shop, I'll put kits in the shop and I don't do a video on them. They're just, I feel like you could tell from the picture. But if for some reason you can't tell from the picture or you can't remember what we did in the project, you definitely can ask me, okay? Don't ever feel like you can't reach out and ask me. Um, the only thing is I just have recently adopted a new, um, a new strategy for my Mondays and Mondays are my do not disturb Mondays, <laughs> meaning that, um, I will not be, I'll only be on social media, like in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, so if you send me or in the evening, rather, if you send me a message on Mondays, it may take me a minute to get back to you. Um, just because Mondays are like my planning day. All right, so I'm gonna open up this twisted jump ring that we have up here at the top, and I'm gonna use this as our branch off for each side of the necklace. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread on one of the copper beads for the left side, and I'm gonna thread on one of the copper beads for the right side, okay? And then I'm gonna lay this down. Uh-oh, there we go. I'm gonna lay this down for attaching the jump ring with the um, the things that have the little dangles here. And part of the reason I wanna do that is because sometimes the dangles end up in the wrong place <laughs> and you have to readjust the entire jump ring. So if you do it while it's laying down flat, you kind of get an idea of all of your little extra dangles. They're all gonna be going in the right direction, if that makes any sense. Like I don't want them to be falling towards the inside. Okay, so I thread on my dangles to that jump ring. I'm gonna thread on the next bead and close that back. So now when I lay this flat, notice how the dangles are, are coming down this way and they're not up here. If they're up here, when you go to put the necklace on, these guys are gonna fall to the inside and they're just not gonna hang the right way. So it, it helps. If you can't do it flat, then put it on the bust while you're putting it together, and that'll really help as well, right? There's nothing wrong with assembling it on the bust. You would definitely need the chain, of course, and you'd want to start from the chain and work your way forward, but you'll get better results than just kind of holding it up in your hands as you're working. This is you're going to find you're going to be opening and closing jump rings several times. Okay, again, I'm gonna close jump ring and then lay out flat to, just to double check, okay? And same thing, I'm gonna open another one and go ahead and hook it in. Okay, add your dangles to it. All right, and then Attach. And you can see, double checking there, making sure. Okay, same thing on the other side. And we're almost done, guys. And I will, I'll show you this one on the bust and I'll show you the rest of them just so you can see what the rest of them look like again. And then I need to go back through and double check all the kits to make sure they all have the right amount of beads because that one that I opened didn't have the right beads in it. So I need to be sure. And guys, if you ever get a kit and there's something missing, let me know. Like mistakes happen. I'm just a, I'm just one person, right? <laughs> I'm just the one person working here by myself. So sometimes mistakes happen. Last night I was working until late and you know, when I get tired. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me if, um, if there's something major missing, right? If there's something major wrong with, with your shipment of anything that comes from my Etsy shop. Okay, so... Vicky wants to know, do you recommend a stronger eye head pin um, 
for simple loops for security? I, you know what? That's a great question. And I don't think anybody has ever asked me that. And I actually do have an answer to that. That's a really, really good question. So yes, I actually do. When it comes to just doing a simple loop, with an eye pin or a head pin, I definitely recommend a thicker gauge, which would be like the 21 gauge. That's probably the most common gauge of head pin or eye pin that you're gonna find that's like prefab, right? If you go to the box store and you buy a package of them, chances are it's gonna be a 21 gauge um, wire. It will make a sturdier, simple loop, okay? We're not talking about, uh, we're not talking about the wrapped loop, right? We're talking about just making a simple loop that matches the loop that's already on there. I would go with the, the thicker gauge. When I use the thinner gauge, I definitely do the wrapped loops. Um, the, the simple loops, the ones that are pre-made, like that loop that's already there, I'm not going to cut it off and like remake it. I'm going to trust it and let it be there. But for my own, just because my own simple loops are not the best simple loops ever, um, and sometimes they don't, I don't get a really good closure on them, I like to do a wraps loop with the thinner ones. But yeah, that is a fantastic question. Thank you for asking that because I feel like that's a question that definitely needs to be addressed and something that I hadn't thought about before. So I hope, I hope that helped a lot of people out there actually. All right, so this is the centerpiece. My chain is attached to the one that's already over here on the bust, so I'll show that to you here in just a second, okay? But just, you know, giving you your last little Vanna White look here at what it looks like laying down, and I'm gonna turn you guys around, and we'll take one last look at all three of these necklaces so you can see them all finished. And you can see just how different they are, even though it's the same thing, right? So this is the one we just put together, right? With the beautiful coppers and the reds. I used copper chain, but you totally could get away with silver chain with this since there is some silver in here. In fact, that might look really pretty um, to bring out that silver. So you don't have to go with just strictly copper chain if, um, if silver is all you've got. Totally rock it, right? So this is the, the copper, okay? Same design, same design, but just different colors, different beads. This one's the green, okay? So you've got your pearls, you've got your check glass, you've got your green. There are some little Swarovski crystals in here. There's a whole little section of Swarovski. Uh, same thing, same look, totally different metal, totally different little focal, but same design, right? So that's the green. And then last but not least is the one that's probably the most dressy out of all of them, um, but I would still just wear this every single day because I'm that person, <laughs> is the sparkly. This one has like that metallic sparkle to it. So you've got your metallic bronzy golds and your metallic kind of silver gray metallic going on. And the difference of course is in that center point. See how this one only has, this one over here on the copper only has two loops, whereas this one was actually um, a chandelier earring component. So it has the three. We used three on the others. We just used a jump ring to make the same kind of look, but it makes, you know, it's not gonna make much of a difference. More than anything, what I wanted to show you guys from this was the same design can look completely different when you change up the metals and the beads. But most importantly is these little findings that maybe you've got ones of, you know, you just have a leftover one. Use it as a necklace component. Those earring components don't have to just be earrings, right? You can turn them into whatever you want them to be. And if they don't have enough, um, you know, connections on them, just add jump rings to them. They're Totally nothing wrong with that at all. Only one left of the red. That was a popular one, you guys. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Copper is just so versatile. I used to feel like copper was only good for like the fall, but I'm in the mindset now that copper works all year, depending on what you mix it with. Just it's so pretty, and I feel like it's underused quite a bit. Oh yes, be amazing resort wear. Well, it's gonna be wonderful when we can go on real vacations again, right? Gonna be so good, I cannot wait. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Here was my Matthew McConaughey moment. All right, all right, all right. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much.
so much for putting up with my silliness. I hope that I have inspired you with this Feel Good Friday project. I always want to give you ideas to think outside the box. You know, use your components, things that you've got from your own stash, use them in your own way, or you can go to my Etsy shop and grab the kits and make them yourself. Just a reminder, the Etsy kits do not contain chains, so you'll have to use your own chain for those. I apologize. I try to give you guys everything, but this time it just didn't work out that way. Also, let um, just remind yourself if you're interested in keeping an eye on the Etsy shop. I'm going to be uploading some more odds and ends this evening, um, probably some more designs by the end of the week. I've got some earrings that I really want to get into the shop. I just haven't gotten them there yet. Um, the Soda Light necklace that we did on Feel Good Friday, I have the beads to recreate that in Amethyst. So if you'd like to have that exact same necklace, but in purple, that's going into the shop soon. All of those updates are coming later on today. I just did not have time to get those up, um, but I try to combine shipping. So just keep that in mind too. Like if you, if you order something now and then later this afternoon you order something i'll combine the shipping and i'll refund you some of your shipping back so keep that in mind because i don't want you to think that like you're spending a ton on shipping when it's only coming in one package that's only if it happens in the same day though okay so just keep that in mind all right have a wonderful wonderful rest of the day you guys thank you so so much for joining me putting up with my crazy um have a wonderful weekend i'll see some of you over on the jewel loom group at 4 p.m otherwise that's eastern time by the way otherwise i will see the rest of you next week have an amazing weekend you guys i love you Bye.